So AudioMoth is a low-cost open source acoustic recorder. One of the applications we've been using it for is monitoring illegal hunting and logging in tropical forests. Through that we've sort of discovered that there's a demand for a low-cost device that you can deploy initially at the moment to collect data sets, ultimately to train machine learning algorithms so you can automatically detect human activity in protected areas and then potentially put those algorithms on the device to have a smart device that is low power and we'll do alerting in real time. So the real surprise has been sort of how many people have used it in, in so many different ways. So we've had people monitoring um, for rare species of bats, people monitoring uh, bird song, insects. So in a sense, it's a very minimal device. We've taken a low cost, low power microcontroller, combined it with a microphone that you um, find in a smartphone. Um, and these are incredibly cheap because they're in billions of devices, um, but they're very sensitive because they're very small. Um, and so we've just put those two things together and developed a very low power device so it will run unattended on batteries for a year, waking up, listening, doing some relatively sophisticated analysis to decide whether it's an interesting sound, um, recording it if it is, and if not going back to sleep again to conserve power. What we really want to do is sort of scale up. So um, one of the key sort of aims is to make it into a device that anyone can use to collect reference data in order to train machine learning algorithms. Um, and so we can do that at the moment, but we need some more tools to make that easy for the average person to use. And then also clearly we'd like to be able to sort of collect that data together um, and do the sort of machine learning on large data sets. So one of the aspects with open source hardware is that you can build it yourself. And the other aspect is the open source software, which now allows you to modify the device for your particular application. So many commercial devices are closed, um, and so if it doesn't quite do what you want it to do, there's nothing you can do about it. But with an open device, you can use that as a basis and then modify it and build your own device. Um, so that's the key thing, it's, it's the adaptability of the device, so you can sort of tailor it to your application. So from our perspective, it's an incredibly exciting time. I think um, conservation technology has sort of been an area where there wasn't a huge amount of development, um, or it's been very small scale. Um, and now I see a lot of tech companies getting interested in using their resources in this area. Open source hardware and software means that people can come in and contribute very easily. So you don't have to be a, a you don't have to be working in one of these organisations to help. You can sort of you can download the tools and actually sort of produce something that's useful to someone immediately. 